today. So um, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Una Basu, who is giving a talk on activity-driven transport in harmonic chains, and uh, who's, uh, who could not come here because it's still very difficult to travel. Um, and we are very happy that you nevertheless uh, accepted our invitation, and we are looking forward to your talk. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, yeah, I'd like to start by uh, thanking the organizers for inviting me uh, in this conference and giving me the opportunity to speak online, even though I could not be there. So I'm going to talk about activity-driven transport in harmonic chains. So this is the uh, sort of outline of, of, of this talk. First, I will very briefly uh, recapitulate uh, the energy transport in a thermally-driven harmonic chain, and then I'll go over to the case when uh, the drive is active, not the usual thermal one. And in particular, I'll focus on two uh, observables. Uh, the first one is energy current, and the other one is kinetic temperature profile. And then I'll uh, conclude with uh, some open questions. So yeah, energy transport in one dimension. So whenever we talk about energy transport, the typical setup we have in mind is the macroscopic system, which is subjected to, to uh, temperature gradient. Uh, and then energy flows from the hotter uh, uh, end to the uh, cooler end of the system. And uh, the simplest uh, kind of theoretical model to understand this uh, phenomenon is, is uh, an oscillator chain, in particular in 1D, an oscillator chain which is connected to two thermal reservoirs at the two ends. And uh, the point uh, to remember is that these reservoirs, thermal reservoirs, are, are in equilibrium themselves. So uh, each reservoir is in equilibrium, even though the temperatures uh, could be different. So the reservoir itself satisfies fluctuation dissipation theorem, which means that the, uh, that the coupling to the reservoir has to satisfy certain uh, conditions. And the relevant uh, questions that are usually asked in this setup is uh, what, what is the energy current, what is the thermal conductivity, and uh, how is the local temperature profile and uh, velocity fluctuations, uh, how does it behave locally, et cetera. So the paradigmatic uh, example is the harmonic chain connected to Langeva bars, which was, uh, which was studied by Ryder, Lebowitz, and Eve in 1967. So let me briefly uh, go over to, their, uh, to the model and, and the results that they uh, obtained exactly. So we are talking about a harmonic chain. So a chain of N harmonically coupled identical, meaning same mass oscillators. And uh, the LS oscillator has a displacement XL from its equilibrium position. And the boundary oscillators, uh, so L equal to one and N, they are coupled to two uh, different thermal reservoirs at temperatures T1 and Tn. Okay. And this coupling is, uh, in the most simplest case, is modeled by uh, adding two forces on the boundary oscillators. One is the dissipation, this uh, gamma x dot kind of term. And the other one is a uh, Gaussian white noise. And, and uh, because the reservoir is in equilibrium, that means that the, the strength of this uh, noise is related to the dissipation in a certain way. Okay, so we have two different uh, thermal reservoirs at the two ends uh, with different temperatures T1 and Tn, and uh, each of which satisfies a uh, fluctuation dissipation uh, theorem. So the temperature, uh, I mean the, the noise at each end is uh, related to the dissipation at that end in a, in a certain way. There are of course various other models of uh, thermal reservoir. Uh, I mean, it's possible to model in various other ways, uh, but this uh, condition of fluctuation dispersion theorem must be satisfied by all, but we'll stick to the most simplest uh, model here. So for this uh, simple model, uh, linearity and Gaussianity allow uh, for an exact solution in the stationary state. And uh, uh, they showed, uh, the RLM paper showed that uh, Eventually, it reaches a non-equilibrium stationary state, although it's Gaussian, and it carries a current. And uh, most importantly, in the thermodynamic limit, that's when the number of uh, oscillators is very large, the current that flows through the system is proportional to the temperature difference of the two reservoirs. It's simply proportional to T1 minus Tn. The proportionality constant depends on, on the mass of uh, oscillators and the coupling um, constant, I mean, the harmonic constant, kappa, and all these things. And another... Uh, Important point is that uh, when one looks at the uh, local temperature, it remains uniform at the bulk at the average of the two uh, thermal, I mean, two temperatures at the two ends. So the bulk temperature is simply T1 plus Tn, Tn by 2, and the current flowing is proportional to T1 minus Tn. Uh, so a natural question to ask is what happens when uh, reservoirs are away from equilibrium themselves? So the reservoirs that we are connecting to the system are not in equilibrium. <coughs> 
And in particular, what happens, the question that we are going to ask here is what happens when one uh, considers active reservoirs. So by active reservoir, I simply mean a medium consisting of, of uh, active particles. So we have already heard uh, quite a few talks about active particles in this uh, conference. So these are self propelled particles. Examples are like bacteria, genus particles, and, uh, and various other kinds of micro swimmers and nanoswimmers. They are inherently non equilibrium in nature. So the, the bath that they make up, the reservoir that they make up, would also be uh, out of equilibrium. And <coughs> recently, uh, there have been many studies, both theoretical and experimental, which study the, the behavior of uh, single probe particles in such active reservoirs. And they already show various kinds of intriguing features like emergence of memory, uh, modification of equipartition theorem and uh, all these things. So what we are going to ask here is what happens, how are the transport properties of extended systems affected when one uh, connects uh, such a system to, 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 uh, to active reservoirs? So this is like a cartoon. You can think of a system connecting to bacterial baths, just, um, just a cartoon representation. And uh, the baths are different, their activities are different. And we are going to take the most simple model again, just a linear uh, harmonic chain. And we'll use a very simple model for the uh, reservoir as well. So let me uh, define the model more precisely. So as before, we have uh, a chain of N harmonically coupled uh, oscillators with this displacement XL for the LS oscillator. And the boundary oscillators, uh, L equal to one and N are coupled to these active reservoirs now. So how do we model these active reservoirs? We simply add an, an extra active force, which does not satisfy fluctuation dissipation theorem and which has a memory. Okay? So apart from the usual uh, thermal noises, so the dissipation constant dissipation and white noise at the two ends, so we have xi1 and xi n, we have two additional forces, which I call F1 and Fn at the two uh, boundary oscillators. These F1 and Fn are exponentially correlated. So they have memory. So that uh, gives the non-Markovian uh, nature of the system. And most importantly, uh, they because this is completely independent of the of the dissipation, and so they do not satisfy any kind of fluctuation dissipation theorem. The, the baths, the reservoirs themselves are, are uh, away uh, from equilibrium by virtue of uh, this kind of modeling. And this uh, correlation time scales, tau one and tau n, they are the measure of uh, reservoir activity. So when tau n and tau n are, are very small, we go towards the passive limit. And when tau is large, uh, that's more active uh, reservoirs. Okay. So as I already said, so presence of this correlated uh, active force that makes the dynamics, this XB dynamics uh, non-Markovian. But more importantly, uh, because this force is, um, is not related to the dissipation, there's no FDT in the system. And that's uh, what is going to give rise to certain uh, just in properties as uh, I'll show a bit later. But before that, uh, let me give some examples how one can uh, generate such exponentially correlated uh, forces. Um, so suppose we have, uh, suppose this force Ft is simply a runtable like uh, force. So Ft is uh, some sigma t, sigma is a dichotomous noise, which flips its sign with some rate alpha. In that case, tau, the time scale is simply one by two alpha. Similarly, one can think of the boundary particle as an active boundary particle where Ft is uh, cos theta. Uh, we also saw uh, this, I mean, uh, each of these examples we have already seen in the, in the conference. So cos theta with theta uh, being a Brownian motion. And similarly, one can uh, think of an active Ornstein-Ulenbeck uh, process at the boundary also. Okay, so we'll not uh, consider any specific details, but just uh, the case that uh, this uh, uh, the, uh, the active force has an exponentially uh, correlated form, exponential uh, correlation, and we'll see that that's enough to um, compute the energy current and temperature profile, which are going to be uh, the quantities of primary interest uh, for this talk. And um, yeah, so we'll we'll be concentrating in the stationary state uh, and. Uh, yeah, because the system is linear, so that again allows exact computation of, of certain observables, the observables we are uh, particularly interested in. And um, I'll not go through the details of the computation, but uh, just mention that we have used the matrix method introduced by uh, Opishik Thor in, in this 2001 work. And uh, using that method, one can show that in the stationary state, uh, the, the displacement of the LS oscillator can be expressed in terms of uh, a matrix uh, G. This matrix G is the inverse of a uh, tridiagonal matrix, this here. I hope you can see my, uh, my cursor. 
Uh, so this uh, G matrix contains the properties of the system and the dissipation gamma. It does not depend on the noise. The noise appears here. So we have xi tilde, which is the Fourier transform of the white noise, the thermal noise, and F tilde, which is the Fourier transform of the active uh, noise. So these two are, uh, have very different uh, properties. As far as the white noise goes, the, the correlation is uh, simply uh, proportional to the temperature. Once again, I mean, uh, remember that this white noise uh, comes from the thermal component of the, of the reservoir, so it satisfies FTT. Uh, the active noise, on the other hand, uh, does not satisfy FTT, and it has a Lorentzian spectrum, okay, which is reminiscent of the, is the signature of the memory of the, uh, of, 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 uh, in, the, in the real time. Okay, so this G tilde, this uh, Lorentzian spectrum of the active uh, reservoir, that's the key quantity here, and that is uh, what controls all the all the uh, uh, observables that we are going to see. Okay. So let's first uh, look at the energy current. So uh, by energy current, I mean the average energy flowing from the reservoir uh, through the system per unit time. And that is, of course, same for uh, all oscillators because there is no source or dissipation in the bulk. And then it's most convenient to write it in terms of the energy coming from the left reservoir to the boundary oscillator, which is here. So this is the velocity of the boundary oscillator, and this is the force that is exerted by the uh, reservoir on the bulk. So it's the, the total force, including thermal component and the active component. And we want to find the average of this, uh, this instantaneous current. Uh, so as it turns out, this can be computed exactly. And uh, because of the linearity of the system, once again, uh, what happens is this total current actually just separates into two uh, different components. One, the thermal component, the other one is the active component. So the thermal component is exactly same as in the case where there is no uh, active force, basically the case which uh, Ryder even uh, uh, studied. Uh, this thermal current is uh, simply proportional to the temperature difference of the two reservoirs. The other one, the active current, is, is uh, much more interesting, and that's uh, our main uh, quantity of uh, interest. So it can also be computed exactly, and uh, formally it's given by, by some integral. Uh, I mean, you don't have to bother about the exact form, but just notice that this uh, G tilde, this uh, reservoir spectrum, appears here. G tilde at the left reservoir and right reservoir. Okay, So this uh, Lorentzian spectrum, is what uh, controls the behavior. And in the, uh, in the end going to infinity limit, the thermodynamic limit, when the chain is very large, uh, it can be uh, computed explicitly. And in that case, the contribution uh, comes from only the, the system phonon band within the system phonon band. So between omega minus uh, two square root K by M and uh, plus two square root K by M, that's the characteristic frequency of the, of the harmonic chain. And, um, and this is the form of the active current. Again, uh, you don't have to bother about the details, but note that the active current is uh, some, rather the difference of two terms, each coming from one, uh, one reservoir. So let's first try to see how it behaves. So this is the plot showing this uh, active current as a function of uh, the activity tau one of the left reservoir okay, for different values of the activity of the right reservoir. So the symbols show numerical simulations uh, with a particular form of active force. Uh, here we took the run uh, kind of uh, form and uh, n equal to 64. Uh, and uh, the, the solid lines are simply n going to infinity uh, results. Of course, they match uh, perfectly. And what more is that we see that there, there are certain uh, very interesting features which uh, become apparent from this plot. First of all, the current is a non-monotonic function of the activity drive or activity of one reservoir. So it first increases and then decreases. With the, with the maximum at some intermediate uh, activity. So th this means that the, uh, the differential conductivity is negative in certain zones. Okay. We'll come back to this uh, issue later. Another point of interest is that the, the current, if you follow one curve, you see that it crosses zero twice, meaning that the current reverses its direction twice. One at the trivial value when tau one equal to tau n, of course, uh, when there's no activity drive, the current has to be zero. But uh, additionally, at a different value of tau one, it, the current also changes sign. So these are two features which were uh, both uh, absent in the thermally driven case. In the thermally driven case, the current was simply uh, proportional to T1 minus Tn, so no non-monotonicity, 
and no uh, reversal except at the trivial point when the uh, when the temperatures are equal so um, i'll just uh, quickly uh, describe this two features uh, in a bit more detail so i'll say already mentioned so uh, negative differential conductivity means that the the, the this uh, dj d tau is z, uh, is uh, negative in certain parameter regime so this uh, negative differential conductivity is sort of a counterintuitive phenomenon so we are increasing the drive and the current is uh, changing non monotonically and such uh, this uh, non uh, negative differential conductivity is possible only away from equilibrium near equilibrium it's not possible and there are uh, certain known examples but all of them are in nonlinear systems in particular uh, in presence of uh, some obstacles or or kinetic constraints so here what we see is that this active drive somehow leads to uh, this ndc in a in a in a completely linear system okay so this uh, it was kind of surprising uh, result for us and to understand uh, the physical origin somewhat we looked at the at the uh, i mean at the, at the spectra of uh, of the system and the reservoir so the system frequency spectrum of course is uh, is peaked so here in this plot in the left uh, panel you can see the blue curve is the system frequency spectrum it uh, it has uh, peaks near the boundary meaning near the characteristic frequency omega c on the other hand the reservoir spectrum is a is a lorentzian with peak at omega equal to 0 that's this orange curve and what happens is that the overlap uh, okay yeah thanks Uh, and uh, yeah the overlap actually changes non monotonically so here if you uh, see in the right panel so the blue curve is for very small uh, activity and then the overlap increases when we go to tau equal to 0.5 some intermediate value and then the overlap decreases again when we go to a uh, very large uh, activity so this is what uh, gives rise to this uh, non monotonic behavior of the current as a function of uh, tau it's also possible to understand uh, this uh, ndc from the perspective of uh, non equilibrium response theory but uh, i am not going into the details of that here let me quickly uh, uh, talk about the current reversal so here is a plot of uh, the current in tau and tau n plane uh, so here the green and the blue curve uh, blue shaded regions show where current is positive and negative so if we vary uh, tau one by keeping tau n fixed we see what we saw in the previous plot so first the current is negative and then it becomes positive and then it becomes negative again so here this curve here is a, a rather non trivial curve uh, which i mean it, it's it's a special curve where the current is zero even though there is a finite activity drive across the uh, across the system okay except at uh, so this happens at at all values of tau one tau two at our tau n except at the saddle point where uh, the current is either positive or negative depending on which way uh, which parameter we pick so this is also a kind of uh, uh, interesting result which we don't see in in uh, in, in uh, when we have thermal or equilibrium reservoirs uh, driving uh, a system at least a harmonic system and uh, next i'll uh, very briefly uh, mention what happens to the kinetic temperature profile so by kinetic temperature i mean the average kinetic energy of of each oscillator and that also can be computed exactly so what what is surprising is that, is that similar to the thermally driven case here also the kinetic temperature profile remains flat at the bulk so here in this plot you can see uh, for a uh, fixed value of tau 1 the profile as a function of l for different values of tau n so uh, this orange curve is for tau 1 equal to tau n and these two are two other other different values so the it remains flat at the bulk and one can show that it's actually of the form it's half of some curly t1 plus curly tn where tn t1 and tn are depending on the uh, tau 1 and tau n only so it ra raises a possibility that whether one can think of an effective temperature uh, picture where this uh, one can associate this curly uh, t1 and curly t and as the temperatures of this active reservoirs so the answer to that is actually no uh, so even though i mean even uh, though the profile is flat and it has this form which is kind of reminiscent of the thermal case there are certain very significant dissimilarities with the thermal case one is that even when tau1 is equal to tau1 tau n so there is no activity drive at all in that case also if you see this orange curve here Uh, in the thermal case, the the 
profile in that case is completely flat, no boundary layer at all. Here, there's still a non-trivial boundary layer present. And more importantly, if we look at what happens, uh, if we uh, associate this uh, effective temperatures and compute what would have been the thermal current given these temperatures, and whether that matches with the activity current that we actually get, uh, th these two do not match. So here in this plot, you can see the solid lines are the actual uh, active currents that we, we compute. And the dashed lines are the projected currents if these were taken to be effective temperatures. So these do not match, except here, if you see in this brown curve, which is for tau n equal to 0.1, and also when tau 1 is very small. So when tau 1 and tau n are very small, then we see that these two uh, currents are kind of uh, converging with each other. So that tells us that in this passive limit, when tau 1 and tau n are uh, very small, uh, there is some sort of a thermal uh, picture emerging. And that is also uh, not very surprising because uh, if we remember our, our activity was coming from these active forces which had uh, exponential correlations with time scales taus. And when tau goes to zero, those exponential correlations actually uh, emulate a kind of a, a delta function uh, correlation. And in that case, one can associate an effective temperature, which is of this form. And one can show explicitly that, that to the leading order, the active current in that case actually does match with the uh, thermal current with this uh, effective temperature. Okay, so I'll quickly conclude. Um, so what we have done is uh, study the energy transport of a harmonic chain connected to active reservoirs. Active reservoirs we model very simply just by adding uh, a, a temporally correlated uh, force, which gives rise to non-Markovian features in the, in the system. But moreover, I mean, more, more important than non-Markovianity is the, is the breaking of uh, fluctuation dispersion theorem. So that makes this reservoirs uh, non-equilibrium. And that gives rise to some surprising behavior like, uh, uh, this uh, negative differential conductivity and current reversal in the current. And uh, this, uh, I just like to point out that these are very robust results. So we did not use any particular form of, uh, uh, of active force. We just assume that it's exponentially correlated. So even if we take an RTP-like uh, dynamics or ABP-like dynamics or uh, some other dynamics, all of which have this exponential correlation, uh, the result would not uh, change. The result would remain uh, exactly the same. And uh, yeah, that's all. I and mean, there are many open questions, of course, uh, in particular, what happens? So here we have used a very simple model of this active reservoir, but what happens if one takes a more realistic model in the sense that if one considers a, an assembly of active particles and uh, uh, coupling um, to them, like in, in, uh, uh, in the cases where single particle uh, probe were, were considered. And another thing is that uh, whether these uh, NDC and current reversals uh, survive in the presence of uh, disorder and what happens uh, when there are the oscillators are not linear, uh, but there is some enhancement. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Una, for this very interesting and clear talk. So uh, we have question, uh, time for questions, and I also want to encourage people in the chat, uh, and of course also for the people in the audience, uh, we'll give priority to students first. Um, but I, we already have a question in the chat, so I will just read it out. Um, so in general, when the system and the reservoirs are strongly coupled, is it easy to identify what the energy current between the system and the reservoir is? For strong coupling, I would expect also a finite contribution from the coupling Hamiltonian. Uh, so here there is no coupling. Uh, which coupling Hamiltonian do you mean? The, the coupling with the reservoir is not happening through a Hamiltonian. It's just uh, dissipation and uh, noise. So maybe I did not understand uh, the question. Can you clarify which uh, coupling Hamiltonian you mean? So Tobias Becker, I hope you can hear her. If you would like, you can t uh, type something in the chat. Okay, okay. 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 Uh, yeah, and there's a student first. <laughs> okay, no, but really. Um, just out of curiosity in this phase diagram where you show the sort of shrinking of this re reverse current phase, 
Uh, exactly. There's a yeah. like that that point where the two reversal regions meet. Yeah. Does it have some yeah. interesting features or? Uh, so this is just a subtle point in the. So if you see, he, this, I did not uh, show this. So this is the uh, plot of the current. I mean the 3D plot. So this uh, this uh, this crossing of the two cars. That's a subtle point. And uh, so when one so if uh, if if tau n is equal to this uh, tau bar and we change tau one, then the current remains negative all through. Okay, except it touches zero at this point. So there is no there is no reversal. It remains negative and touching this uh, zero at this point. And on the other hand, if we fix tau one at this value and uh, change tau n, then the current remains positive throughout. That's the feature of uh, this point. Ayurna, so uh, uh, I, have, I have a question. So do you expect anything interesting in the large deviation function of the current? Possibly. We have not looked at the large okay. deviation yet. Um, but possibly, yes. So here, of course, I mean, once we have this active drive, the, the whole system is not Gaussian anymore. And we expect some signature of that also appearing in the large division function. Uh, OK. Ah, we have uh, another question. Hi, Urna. It's uh, Marco. Um, hi, hi, hi. Yeah. Uh, in terms of magnitude, is it as, uh, can, can it become as large as the thermal current, or it's uh, of another order of magnitude? Uh, which one? The current itself. I mean, I mean, this active current, is it as big as the other one or uh, it's uh, much smaller than the thermal, uh, thermal current? Yes, I think it, yes, I think it, it can be. I mean, there is no, uh, there is no uh, relative uh, competition between these two. So the actual magnitude will depend also on the strength of the noise. So here this A's, so the, the correlation that we had, F, uh, FT, FT prime, that also has a strength. And depending on if we increase that strength, the, the current would also, uh, I mean, the overall magnitude can be scaled. I also have a question, Una. Um, so uh, I was, I'm interested in the te uh, temperature profiles that you showed. And you showed that mm -hmm. uh, different from the um, case of just thermal drive, it, your boundary effect spreads a little bit into the bulk, right? So there is a little bit of spreading into the bulk. And I was wondering if you know if that is uh, because of the activity or is it because of the memory? In other words, if the two bars would have memory but would be FDT fulfilling, would you also have the spreading or not? Do you know that? Uh, uh, I don't, but I can check. I think it's very interesting because, uh, of course, for equilibrium this is, systems... This we... is exponential. This is exp I mean, the boundary yes. layers are exponential. That we did check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but whether, uh, whether it uh, survives if one does not have uh, activity but uh, still non Markovian, yes. this I don't know. Don't okay, check. yeah, uh, very interesting. Thank you. Okay, I think we uh, had a lot of uh, discussion, and if there are more questions, uh, you can uh, send them to Ona in the chat, and I think we should. Uh, or to me, <laughs> and we can move on to the next speaker and thank uh, Una again very much for the Thanks. nice talk.